How much room does a fungi need? As much room as it takes. Welcome to Dad Jokes with the Purposeful Pantry. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking mushrooms. We're going to be drying mushrooms. Uh, slice mushrooms here. Oh, I'm backwards here. Slice mushrooms. Uh, I'm making mushroom, uh, minced mushroom here. And then a special mushroom powder that's not just mushroom powder, it's a special blend that you might want to try. Okay, before we get started dehydrating our mushrooms, we're going to talk a little bit about cleaning them and the truth behind whether or not you can use water with mushrooms when you're dehydrating, okay? Most, most commercial uh, mushrooms that you get at the store in, a, in, in this kind of format have been grown in a medium uh, that is not dirt, but it's mushroom medium. But the thing is, is that people are confused about whether or not you can use water or you can only wipe them off with a cloth. So you can use whatever you would like to clean them. If you want to use a cloth and just brush off all of this medium, you can use a brush to wipe them off. You can rinse them off in water. You really can. What happens is, is that when you're rinsing these off, you're going to be fine. They will absorb a little bit of water. Alton Brown did a, uh, a test on this uh, quite a few years ago on his show Good Eats where he washed some and he wiped some and then he weighed them to, to, to measure what they were actually absorbing. They absorbed very little water that it would matter with anything and especially for dehydrating that water is just going to go so it's not like it's an issue. If you put water on your mushrooms and allow them to absorb a little water they're going to dehydrate darker. They're going to be a darker product at the end. It doesn't mean that that, de that that mushroom is bad, it just means that that's what's gonna happen to it after it's gotten wet and then dried. It's gonna be a little darker. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse most of these mushrooms up really quickly, but I'll leave some unrinsed so that by the time we get through, you can see the difference. Here's my batch of the things that I just wiped off, my batch of the things I rinsed. I went ahead and got them right on a towel and moved them around to try to absorb whatever excess moisture was on the surface. So what I'm gonna do with most of this is they're gonna get minced down into smaller pieces that we can use to cook with or going into powder. So what tools do you need to do all of this? You can use a knife. You can use a veggie chopper like this that has uh, either like a little dice for you if you want to dice these up or you can use your food processor which is what I'm going to use in a minute to go ahead and, and batch most of this. I'm just going to pulse them in my food processor to break them down. If you use an egg slicer, while these are great, some of these are super super cheap, this wire blade will break easily. So if you have a really tough mushroom and you try to cut it, it's going to break your blades. So instead, I'm going to put a picture of it right here. Okay, the <clears throat> the mushroom and the egg slicer that I mentioned earlier it finally came after I was done with everything. So I'm inserting this little clip just to show you the difference. This is what you're purchasing. If you do it, it is a metal and it's very heavy metal. It's not like it's like a flimsy metal. And you can see the blades here are actual metal blades, not wires like are in a typical egg slicer. And you can see I broke wire yesterday. Remember we talked about that a little earlier in the video. So here is, I'm having to do this one handed, sorry, mushroom and the egg slicer. You can do this one handed and it just goes straight through. And because I'm doing it one handed, I need to have that other hand to kind of push, push here. So, so it goes straight through with no problem. Now, this will work. You can go through, but as you see, uh, especially if your mushroom might be a little tougher, you're going to have a little more problem getting through it without tearing it, and you run the risk of breaking off the wires. All right, so let me show you just cutting these up. These mushrooms are just a little past their prime. They're not bad. They're just a little past their prime, so some are breaking up a little more than they need to. You're looking for about a quarter of an inch, but if I get one that's a little wider, I don't care. These dry really quickly, and I'm not, I'm not gonna fuss over that little bit uh, of space. They also, uh, you can also do the, the stems. If the stems are really tough and very woody, you might wanna set those aside for doing a broth, but otherwise you can do the whole thing. So there's that. Then we're gonna do one with the mushroom egg cutter and this didn't quite cut well enough, but yeah, see, there you go. There are your slices all ready to go. If you're gonna use a vegetable chopper like I am, I'm going to use the smaller blades because I want a good mince. Pop this in, and there you have. Okay, you can do it that way as well. You've got that. So let me slice up the ones that I'm going to do for examples to show you how the the uh, wet ones 
uh, the ones that were rinsed are going to fare to the ones that weren't rinsed. And then I'll pulse all these and we'll get them onto our dehydrator trays. And I have such a surprise for you. See, I didn't even notice. Look, it broke that wire on my OXO. Okay, so here's what I've got. A mess? Yes. Do I have a mess? Yes. Mushrooms are messy. I, I cannot do nice clean mushrooms. So what I have, my pile of rinsed, my pile of wiped, and then two bowl full of mints of the mints. So those are all going to go into the new dehydrator and I can't wait to show you next. This is what we're dehydrating with today. Can you believe it? It is a dehydrator. This is the Broad and Taylor Sahara folding dehydrator. Uh, it is something that they get they gave me to uh, to use so that you could see how it works and I want to thank them for that. Um, so it is a quick and easy process of just being able to unpack this. This is going to be great for those of you who have workspaces, but you don't have storage spaces. So um, it folds down into this compact model versus what a normal size dehydrator looks like. It can be stored in your closet, under your bed, behind your couch, wherever is a good place for you to go. So this is a compartment that is full of all of my trays and all of my silicone sheets, which are these silicone sheets right here. Okay. Okay, so these are the trays. Um, and then if we move this off, we have the dehydrator itself. So I'm gonna pull this out. Lift it up. Set it down. I'm just gonna do a really quick um, uh, opening. Just like this. have a machine. Now I've got to still plug it in. The plug is in the back back here. Let me get this all set up for you and then we'll get to dehydrating our mushrooms. So for one tray, I'm going to go ahead and use this poly, uh, the, the poly pan uh, sheet they gave us, tray, sorry, the poly tray they gave us. I'm going to put in, these are the ones that I just wiped off, sliced, and they are ready to go in the machine. And the darker ones here are not dark because of being rinsed. They're dark because they were the uh, baby Bellas. They are a little firmer than just the white ones, um, if that helps you at all. So there are the non-rinsed, only wiped. Then here are the rinsed. Okay, for the minced, I just went ahead and minced all these up and I'm just gonna pour them out on the sheets. They're going to be too large to go on to the trays by themselves. They'll just slip through all of the holes. So I'm going to just keep spreading these out. And while I do want to make sure they're not just piled high on top of each other in a big clump, I'm not so concerned about making sure they're all not touching because they do shrink up. Not a ton, but they do shrink. So we're just going to kind of spread it out like this. All right, so two more trays to go, three more trays to go. I don't know how many of these will take. All right, so my trays are in. We've got one, two, three, four, five trays of uh, minced chopped mushrooms. We've got one tray of uh, mushrooms that have been rinsed and then one tray of ones that have been just padded, just wiped off. I hope I got those right. We are going to turn the machine on. Okay, so the mode to take it to temperature, I'm gonna go down to 125 because that's where I dry this at. You're gonna see numbers all over the place for how to dry mushrooms. I try to keep everything as low as I can uh, within reason. And so you can dry this anywhere from 135 down. It won't matter. So I just keep it at 125. I could go any temperature I wanted, right in that range. So what I'll do is I'll set it for 120. Drop a little bit, it's gonna go for a little longer. If I needed to change this to be Celsius instead of Fahrenheit, I would push these two buttons for two seconds. And it changes it immediately to 49 Celsius. Okay, push them again. 
and it go back it goes back to Fahrenheit. We're going to set the time for just this probably won't take more than about six hours um, but I'm gonna go ahead and just run it for 12 because I'm gonna let this run overnight because I needed just to have it go until they're done and because it's late enough in the evening for us these aren't gonna be done before I go to bed it is not going to hurt them to run longer this machine is set up to where it runs at full strength until it notices that most of the moisture is gone and then it ratchets down the power that it uses so it helps save a little money too okay here we go all right we'll close the doors and we'll see you tomorrow so good morning here we are with a done machine we're gonna turn off the power and just let it the fan stop running because with small things, with powders, you want to make sure that fan has stopped completely before you open your machine. Last night before I went to bed, I checked these uh, and I didn't put it on camera, but I wanted to come through and look. So what I found is this one dried faster in the back than the front. So I went ahead and rotated the trays, which is something that a lot of machines need to do. Um, when the fans come from the back, um, they're going to dry the things that are in the back faster than they dry the things up in the front. It's just the nature of how these work. This one just seemed to do it a bit faster. It doesn't affect anything. It just means that I rotated the trays just to make sure that overnight everything did the same. So while you do need to let this wait for 10 minutes or so to let it cool off, I can already tell these things are like crispy, crumbly dry. They are ready to go. This is going to make awesome powder. Then here are my whole sliced mushrooms. Okay. And this is what they look like. So uh, I'm going to say that until I go back and review the video, these are the ones that I just wiped clean and these are the ones I rinsed. And you can see that these are just a little darker. Okay, there's nothing wrong with them. It's just that they're a little darker. Okay, so let's get into what we do next because this is the fun part. Okay, when you've gotten your mushrooms done, you're looking for crisp, brittle mushrooms, okay? So I'm going to throw all of these into a jar. They have been cooled. They're ready to be stored. And I can use these to top uh, uh, pizzas. That's what we really like to do with them. We just throw them on top of a pizza just like they are. Just sort of the same way we do uh, the dried tomato slices. You can just lay them on top. Uh, because dried mushrooms are so fun. I love to eat these on their own just as a snack just like they are. You can throw them into meals. And as long as you allow them time to rehydrate and to cook, you won't have a texture that some people complain about because they don't give them time to rehydrate. Now to rehydrate any of these, I'm not gonna do that right now because I can't use them at the moment. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a bowl of very hot water and you're gonna let your mushrooms sit in there for about 30 minutes. You might even wanna simmer them in a small pot on your stovetop and just allow them time to open up all of the cells so they can reabsorb the water then they go into the dish that you're going to make and they still get time to cook. Um, one of the problems with dehydrated mushrooms that a lot of people have is that when they rehydrate them, they don't give them long enough to cook and they still have a kind of rubbery consistency that people don't like. That's why what I'm going to do next is the way to use up mushrooms no matter what. And okay, of course, now with these bits, I can easily just store them and use them just like you would fresh mushrooms, okay? I'm just going to take up this mat and I'm going to do this, kind of get them all into a more pourable thing. And I'm just going to transfer them into a storage container just like this. It's that easy. So what's going to happen is that these can store in an airtight container for, you know, honestly with mushrooms, it's much longer than with regular food. I'm not going to say it's much longer. I have more success having long-term storage with mushrooms than I do other foods because it keeps its flavor so much better. Um, so I have mushrooms in my pantry that are about two and a half years old. Um, a mushroom powder that is the last of a stock that I did a couple years ago that's still there that still has so much flavor when you use it. And typically you would say that powders are good for about six to nine months because they can begin to lose their potency. They can begin to lose their nutrients because you've exposed so much more of the powder to the atmosphere. But with mushrooms, it's just different. So this is easy. This is all you have to do. So once you're done loading, the next thing you want to do 
is do your conditioning if you're gonna put this away for storage because you wanna make sure that you're not seeing any moisture buildup, you're not seeing any clumping, you're not seeing any condensation happening on the jar. And then once you're ready for storage, you can transfer those into the storage jar that you want. I'm gonna keep this here. And then what I will do is that mushrooms are susceptible to moisture a little more than other things can be. Uh, and so I just plop in a moisture absorber in the jar that I'm going to be using a lot. Not the one that I've just put away for storage, but the one I'm gonna be in and out of all the time. That way, anytime I open the jar and introduce more moisture, this will take care of it. What it does not do is finish dehydrating the food that you might not have gotten fully dehydrated. Never rely on it for that. Uh, you just wanna use it to help manage the moisture that's introduced into the jar every time that you open it. Okay, so the next project is the part that I'm more excited about because this is the part that I love so much. Okay, now it's time to get busy. You betcha we're making powder because it's Darcy. It's Darcy at the Purposeful Pantry. So one of my very favorite cooking implements uh, as far as food goes that I use for so many dishes, especially when they're, uh, when you just want to add a little extra oomph to it is mushroom powder. Okay, uh, it adds this what's called umami. It's kind of like a meaty flavor in, um, into things that just gives it a bigger depth of flavor. So you can add this to eggs. A lot of people who are vegans will use this to kind of add a more depth of flavor kind of things to uh, dishes that they have to make them taste just a little bit more. So it's a kind of weird thing that your tongue does to your brain that says, hmm, what's that extra little bit of something? Okay, so this is all I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna take all these bits and I'm gonna pour them into my jar. I don't wanna get it too full because the blade still needs to fit, but I can crush these down pretty easily. Then what I'm gonna do is take them into, uh, into my bullet blender. All right, so here we go. The good thing about using bullet blenders is that you don't have to have a ton. You can just use a small bit, so we're gonna grind this. But what we do is we don't just push it down and hold it. With these, it's important to pulse, 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 then grind, because you don't wanna wear out your, uh, the machine. Now, unlike many other things, unlike many other vegetables, this is a fungi, it's not a vegetable, but um, one of the things I learned very early on when I was making powders, when I first started experimenting with what they do, I made the mistake of doing this in my big blender. And as soon as it was done, I opened the top to look inside and I got a cloud of mushroom powder in my face, in my lungs, in my mouth. Um, it's really important to let things settle, to let your jar open your jar. And just allow and I pour this into a bowl for you so you can see it. Oops, I made a mess. See, and do you see the cloud happening? This is how fine that mushroom gets. Okay, so you want to make sure that you're not sticking your head right over. So here is mushroom powder. This is the most gorgeous flavor of anything that I do as far as just adding so much more flavor depth to anything that I cook. And it's the best way for me to use dried mushrooms because then we all can enjoy it. So this is mushroom powder. So I wanted to show you that by volume, about one half cup of these mushroom chips equals just over four tablespoons of mushroom powder. So I'm gonna finish grinding the rest of my mushrooms and then I'm gonna get together a little special treat for you to make to make this go even further. Okay, here we go. Here's what we're gonna do. Now, here is our mushroom powder. This stuff is amazing on its own. It can be used in so many ways by putting into anything that's already meaty. It adds more meat flavor. If you wanna add meaty flavor to something that doesn't necessarily have it already, it just ups the depth of flavor. Um, some people would say that this kind of was like an MSG where you're not really using MSG. So we add it to our eggs all the time. I add it to any dish that I'm making that's kind of savory. I will add this to mac and cheese. I will add this to in everything. So it's not as if it, there's a dish that I don't use it in. I will put it with green beans. Um, you can add this to rubs for your meats. You can add this to any seasoning blend. 
of roasted vegetables. What I'm going to show you today is kind of like a ripoff of the Trader Joe's umami seasoning. There are a ton of different recipes out on the web that you can go find one that you like. Um, you can kind of mix and match things to make it work for you. Um, you can actually even make this a little spicier and add a Cajun flair to it by doing some more uh, chili seasonings and pepper um, to do it to make it just up the quotient for like more flavor. You can make it spicier by putting jalapeno powder in or you can do red crushed red flakes. Um, there are just a lot of things that you can do just to make it yours. We're gonna do, get my recipe over here so that I can remember how to do this. Okay, three tablespoons of mushroom powder. And remember this stuff is that little cloud. A tablespoon of onion powder. And I'm not exact about this. I just like take a bunch in, do it that way. And then two teaspoons of mushroom powder. And I don't normally keep mushroom powder in the house like it is. I keep it, um, I keep the seeds and then just grind my own when I need it. So I just two, two, table, two teaspoons of mustard powder. Ah, the thing I forgot to do is bring all the thyme down. Okay, I need a teaspoon of thyme, but you know what? Add a little more. You can add oregano in here too if you want. I'm just gonna add all that. A little bit more. I'm feeling it today. I did two. Okay, then we have a tablespoon of salt and a tablespoon of pepper. And this makes a really good base. There's my salt. Salt doesn't matter what you use, use what you like. So a tablespoon of salt, and I'm gonna add just a little bit more because for what we're gonna do with this next. Oh my goodness, did I just do that? I just put the salt in the onion powder. All right, <laughs> now we're gonna do a tablespoon of salt. And if you could see what I just did, um, I took it out. Maybe I'll add it in there. I added the tablespoon to my onion powder instead of my mix because I'm a dork. And my husband's behind me laughing at me. Okay, now we're going to do about a tablespoon of uh, black pepper. Now, if you'd like, you can use white pepper. We like that as well. And uh, you can use whichever one you want. Black has a bit of a stronger flavor. If you like pepper but you don't like it so strong, you can use the white. And then all we do, oh, one jar lid. Okay, that is a single serving. I know that you can't see it because the mushroom cloud that's on the inside... make this usually in a bigger batch so there you go there it is right there I know that you can't tell it that it's a thing but it's a thing so what do you do with this put this on your popcorn trust me it's gonna be good you can put this on as a seasoning to put over potatoes and then you roast them it's good uh, just find new ways to use this stuff that's how you play with your dehydrated powders just make it do it, put it together, and you can have like some amazing blends to put on things to just make things taste better. Now, I'm going to have the recipe for this down in the description box below if you're interested in printing it off. Remember, I'm going to put a couple of extra things that you can do to it to, to give you a couple of options, but this is the best. It's just, it tastes so good. So I want to thank Braden Taylor again for sending me the Sahara folding dehydrator to try out. I, I loved using it. And if you would like to learn more about dehydrating pantry staples, then click this list right here. If you'd like to see more about a review of the dehydrator, click right here. And until next time, thanks again for watching. Happy dehydrating.